I'm gonna apologize for the noise in the background. I've got some laundry in the washing machine and I'm not gonna turn it off because, you know, I have laundry to do. So, um, I'm also gonna apologize for the slightly crappy lighting. It's a very dull day today. Um, and actually, although this is one of the brightest rooms or most well lit rooms in the house, um, it is unfortunately still gloomy. Um, which means I've got the overhead light on, which means I think there's some like weird shadows on the picture, on the screen. But hey, we'll, we'll make good, we'll crack on. So um, basically then, I'm gonna carry on using the materials that you saw me use in the um, sort of month setup, and I'm gonna set up four weeks of weekly spread. So normally I don't do this. Normally what I would do is I would set up days and weeks as I go. Um, so I might kind of do a double page spread with the intention that that will be however many days. All of these spreads are going to be really easy to do. Um, they're all going to be the sort of thing that you can do with kind of minimal um, materials. You know, pens. <clears throat> I have a cold as well, so sorry about that. Um, pens, maybe a bit of washi tape. Um, pencils even if you've got them. Um, basically anything to add a bit of colour stuff that you can stick in, that kind of thing. So we'll uh, we'll make this super simple uh, and we'll make every week as straightforward as possible. So this is what I'm using. I've got um, the four washi tapes that I already used on my monthly spread. Um, I've got my, this is my Tombow um, Funosuke brush pen. Um, I've got three sizes of Faber-Castell um, Pit Artist pens. I may not use all of this, but um, I've got the um, Uniball Signo sort of copper gold bronze. Is it called bronze? I think it's called bronze. Called bronze. Um, gel pen. <coughs> the Uniball Signo white gel pen. Um, my fountain pen. The ink that's in this is, I think, a diamine ink. Um, I keep meaning to look it up and put it in the description for you. Um, the, the pen itself is a, um, let me put these down, the pen itself is a fountain pen, it's a, a Pilot MR, I think it's called in the UK, I think they're called Metropolitan in the US. Um, this is basically, it just takes a standard cartridge, um, so this is the ink that's in at the moment. <clears throat> um, so this is the one that I'm using for like my day to day writing for this month because it's a kind of brown, orangey sort of colour, it's got it's quite nice with the theme. Obviously I've got scissors, I've got my tape, my glue tape, um, the stuff that I've got to stick in is obviously this again, this is this paper bag um, with the kind of vintage adverts. Obviously depending on what you have to hand, it might be stuff that you've printed off from the internet. Um, it might be that you know you've got like a paper pack or something like that or um, like magazine images or something it's basically just anything that you could that you've got that works within a theme and that might be a color theme or it might be an image theme you know you might do something that's like um, for summer you might do like beaches and and seascapes and stuff like that um, so it's literally just whatever you've got that will work as a kind of general theme um, so without further ado, I'm going to open this up, turn to the first blank double page spread and crack on. <clears throat> okay, so um, when it comes to doing a weekly spread, basically you, you have two choices um, to start off with. You would either do a vertical spread or a horizontal spread. So what does that mean? So a horizontal spread is something where the days of the week go across the page and a vertical spread is where the days of the week go down the page. Um, then you want to think of it in terms of like dividing up your page. So um, you might have um, something where you've got an image or some decorative stuff down the middle, or you might have your days of the week down the middle and then the decoration on the outside edges. Um, or you might just kind of fill your whole pages with uh, and splash stuff about. So to give you an idea of what I mean, um, so this is one, this is a vertical spread and you can kind of see from what I do that I, I prefer vertical spreads, but you can see I've decorated down the outside edges and the dates are down the middle. Um, this one is the opposite, so the decoration is down the middle and the dates and, and stuff's on the outside edges. And then if we go back to um, like March, um, this was, this is more of a kind of haphazard 
um, spread and you can you can do these are all very very easy to do and the point of what I'm going to do is that none of this is going to be fancy or not achievable or require any kind of artistic skill so there's going to be no drawing in this there's going to be no fancy like headers and text and fonts and stuff I'm just going to keep it as simple as possible so um, what I'm going to do is I will speed up the bits that I can um, just to make this video run a bit quicker um, and um, when I need to stop and talk to you and tell you about stuff then I will do so we'll start Okay, so I just wanted to um, pause the sped up version for a minute just to talk about these. These are stickers that I have from, I think I've mentioned her before, Cheyenne Barton. There you go, I don't know if you can kind of see the information there. Let me try and lift that up a bit. So there you go, you've got her Instagram and stuff at the bottom here. So um, she is an artist based in, I think, Washington State, maybe might be Seattle I can't really remember where she's based she's based in the Pacific Northwest um, and um, she does these really really cute uh, drawings and what have you so I, I have a few of her her sticker sheets so these are these are the three that I have and then this was a freebie for, thrown in and I actually thought these might be really cute with this theme because they've got that kind of muted tone to them so it's just an example of where you might have something that isn't necessarily like on theme but sort of works with what you've got so I'm going to use some of these little stickers just to kind of jazz this particular spread up a little bit and um, just because otherwise it's a it's a bit sort of over simple if that makes sense so let's carry on okay then so this this is basically the first week's worth of spread and you can see I've done six days this is because I don't um, I don't as I say do a um, put every day in my bullet journal so um, I'll show you what I'm talking about so if I go back to the previous month right so here's an example then this was towards the end of March I think it was and you can see I've got the, the 23rd 24th 25th of March and then nothing till the 31st and it's just you know sometimes you might be on holiday um, or you might be away or you might just be working all the time and actually there isn't a lot of point in putting lots of detail in about you know like your to-do list or what you want to achieve because you know you're not really going to achieve anything um, or because you you're just gonna do like little bits and pieces now sometimes I, I do find it really helpful to be very very consistent so um, turn back to the week that I'm currently in because I've got a couple of days of July here so you can see that the kind of thing that I'm I'm I've been doing the last sort of few days of June is every day you've got kind of meditation and reading meditation reading and writing um, meditation and reading again and um, you know it's just one of those things that that I'm trying to be more consistent with that thing so I'm that means I'm and putting more consistent dates in my bullet journal there might be times when I don't need to do that because that habit is settled um, in which case you know I don't need to be writing meditation and reading every day meditation reading and writing every day um, it just reminds me to do those things um, so I might not need to do every single day which is why I'm not bothered about having seven days on a page and I find it a lot nicer to have in this circumstance where it's kind of a vertical spread to have six days because then you don't have that whole thing about which side you put three days on and which side you put four days on and do you have like your Saturday and Sunday is one entry um, you know my that's that doesn't work for me if that works for you then that's what you should do okay so there you kind of get an idea of um, how the rest of that spread might work a couple of things to mention is obviously um, I probably should have measured out the spacing for the three lines honestly I couldn't be bothered and I know it doesn't really matter to me if that's something that matters to you then do that 
Um, variations that you might want to do is you might want to, instead of putting the, the day of the week in the blobs, you might want to put the date. Um, so that might have been three, four, five, etc. You can go across like that if you prefer to. It's so one of the things about bullet journaling, you can make it whatever you want and do whatever you want with it. Um, it's super, super freeing and it's super kind of flexible in that way. Okay then, so um, I'm going to do, I've got an idea for a, another kind of more vertical layout. Um, and this would be really easy to do again no matter what sort of situation you're in. Um, basically I'm going to use, go back to my trusty Primark bag um, and we're going to use some more of the brown paper from this. Um, so yeah, um, just watch along and see what you think. Just a note on tearing paper. Um, you'll notice that when I'm tearing this, it's tearing really, really easily in a nice straight line or a relatively straight line. And that's because paper always has a direction that it tears in easily versus the other direction where it doesn't. So if I try to tear this way, you can kind of see it doesn't tear quite so nicely. Um, and that's because of the grain of the fibers in the paper. So when paper's manufactured, obviously it's um, wood pulp usually. Um, or other kinds of pulp because there's stone paper as well but it's pulp and then um, it's kind of compressed and brushed and, and moved in a particular way and what happens is that the fibres then start to lay in, in, in a particular direction so you'll always find with it might be like toilet paper, kitchen paper, this kind of paper um, printer paper, there's usually a direction where it tears very easily and then not so easily in other directions so I'll just give you another example you can see that's not me doing anything different. I'm just going a bit more slowly and a bit more carefully because I know it's not going to tear in a straight line. So it's something to bear in mind. If you want a straight line, then you can maybe just get a piece of scrap paper and then just see how it tears. So you can even see just this tiny little piece, how it, it it's like less straight. Um, or you can take a bigger piece and then, like I say, just tear it. You'll also get one edge always where what you should do is you should basically pull it. Um, so if you think of it like, um, uh, I, I don't really know, but um, again to do with the fibers, if you hold the paper down and then pull it towards you, you'll get an easier tear, especially if you're going in the direction of the, the, um, the fibers. Um, and then that way you're, you, you know where the tear is gonna go. If you kind of hold it up here and do it, you, you're not necessarily going to get the same effect. Um, so to give you another example, if I hold that down, there you go. I'm just going to tear this paper up into what I want is six pieces. Um, and what I especially don't want is actually this has a kind of straight or a cut edge. I don't want any cut edges. Um, what you find as well is when you're tearing paper, it's, this isn't really showing it so well. Um, let me see what I've got here that I can show you. <clears throat> so when you tear paper, um, especially paper like this where it's coloured on one side and not on the other, what you get is you get, there we go, that's an, a good example. So you can see this edge has no white, it's coloured all the way on the edge, and then this edge, if I hold that up, you can kind of see the white edge and that's because obviously there's a surface to it so if it's the same kind of color all the way through like this stuff is then you don't really see where that te that torn edge is um, there we go I'm just gonna get rid of that fold um, so it's worth bearing that in mind if you're you're using a um, a paper that's like coated or doesn't have um, it doesn't have the same colour on both sides. Um, that can work to really good effect. I have particular papers called Core Coordinations, I think they're called. Um, I don't have any to hand at the moment, but they're actually deliberately a different colour on the outside, so they're coated with a different kind of dye, and then the inside of the paper is a different colour, so that what you get is you get a really nice effect where you know, you'll have like a, a dark red and then the inside of the paper is pink, so that you can see where the torn edge is.
So when I've stuck this down, you can see there are some edges because the um, the sticky tape doesn't give me a kind of like cloak, get me close enough to the edges all the time. So what I've got is I've got like little corners that are lying upwards just because of the, the way that the paper wants to lie and the way that it's been folded and stuff. So what I've got is this is a, a glue pen and obviously you, you can get something like this or you can get you know just ordinary glue and use like a little brush or a cocktail stick or something like that but what this is going to do is it's going to give me the ability to do detail gluing um, and I do this sometimes when I've got stuff like this where it's not like a straight edge and, it, and it's a bit more difficult to kind of get all the way into. Okay then, so there we go, that's another super, super simple layout. Anybody could do that with any piece of paper and all you need is a black pen and a white pen or like a Tipex pen or something like that. Okay then, so for the next layout, what I wanted to do was I wanted to do a, a horizontal layout. Um, now, sometimes with layouts, and if you have a look online, if you do like a Google image search or have a look on Pinterest, um, for like weekly spreads what you see is that there are lots of, of kind of extra bits that you can add in now obviously you, you've kind of seen my weekly spreads are literally just what I'm doing or what I need to do occasionally I throw some quotes in and, and stuff to fill space but effectively it's just kind of a to-do list for me lots of other people will put in extra bits and pieces like you know they might have a little box for tracking water intake or um, you know for like a list of tasks that they need to get done that week and what have you um, it that the main reason why I don't use that why I don't do that is because I have other ways of tracking those things so some of them are through my habit tracker so if I go back to this <clears throat> you can kind of see like I've got water on my habit tracker for example so I'm not going to track my water intake both here and also on my weekly spread but some people prefer to do it on the weekly spread the beeping in the background is my washing machine because it's finished the cycle I'll go sort that in a minute so yeah obviously I'm not going to have necessarily have like a task list and the other thing that I do as well is um, I'm kind of a hybrid planner now so I use Trello for um, certain elements of the organization of my to-do list and the tasks and my goals and what have you um, and I might do a, a video on that on a, 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 at another date but um, but yeah in essence basically the spread that I'm gonna do next is gonna have a bit of extra space in it for like anything that you could want to put there so I'm gonna put some like random boxes just to kind of give you an idea of what you might want to use them for but obviously again the thing about the bullet journal method is that it's completely flexible you do what you want to do and what suits you Just to pause for a moment, you'll notice that what I've done with this spread is that I've drawn all the lines in the same direction first. Um, if you've ever come across the idea of muscle memory, basically your muscles remember a movement, especially if you do them over and over again. So if you're drawing straight lines, or straight-ish lines, if you're drawing lines then it's a good idea to draw all the ones in the same direction first because what you're doing is you're actually training your brain and training your muscles to do that same movement over and over again so you're more likely to get neater lines and parallel lines as well um, so <clears throat> it's important to do that and um, it's also easier to draw a line towards you than it is to draw a line away from you so if you're moving away from you um, certainly if you kind of at an angle where you're moving away from your body the line is less likely to be smooth and it's less likely to be straight because you can't see where you're going if you're coming towards you you can see where you're going 
um, it's the same kind of principle when you you're doing horizontal lines as well so obviously you have to turn your page you can't you can't draw a line across like that you'll never get it straight and you'll never get it parallel because your your natural movement of your, of your arm is actually in a curve so I don't know if you can kind of see that you the let's find a little bit of scrap paper here <clears throat> so your natural without looking and without thinking about it that is the natural sort of movement of your arm of your hand um, across your body so toward uh, away and towards you is much more of a kind of straight line whereas if you're going horizontally or if you're going across then it's more of a natural kind of curve that being the case um, and equally moving towards you as well um, that being the case when you're doing a horizontal line you, you kind of you do need to turn your page because if you if you're working that way you're actually kind of pulling your elbow into your body you're not going to get a natural movement and what you might get is you might get like a, a jagged line um, personally when it comes to drawing horizontal lines I prefer to go away from me even though I can't really see where I'm going that's why sometimes my horizontal lines are a bit wonky <clears throat> but coming towards you because you can see where you're going you tend to get a neater line it's just personal preference whatever works better for you when it comes to freehand line drawing um, drawing straight lines um, what I'm actually doing is I'm not looking at where my pen is I'm looking at where my pen is going so when I'm moving towards me I'm looking at a couple of spaces or a space ahead of the nib of the pen and when I'm moving away from me what I'm actually doing is I'm moving my head very slightly so I can see past the nib to see where it's going next and that's how you can get a more um, a straighter line basically <clears throat> when you come to drawing on the edge of a page like on this edge it's not so bad because I've got a bit of space um, but like drawing on these edges at the bottom it's going to be so much easier to just turn it around okay so that's all of the boxes for this drawn out um, now it's going to be down to kind of decorating and finishing um, so see just to take a moment what I'm doing here and, and you might have noticed this is a thing that I do uh, or that I've done all the way through this um, style of spread is that before I stick anything down I'm kind of laying it out to see how it looks um, so what you don't want to do especially if you've got something like this this is a really really um, like permanent tape so um, if I stick something down with this it ain't gonna move um, so what I try and do is try and kind of decide how I want it to look before I stick anything down. Um, so that's what I'm doing here basically. Okay, so here we go then um, obviously the first few pages are the pages that you've already seen um, and then ooh, following on are the weekly pages so all I've done is I've taped the edges and then 
once again I've added some of the Tim Holtz ideology um, phrases basically so these are just printed sort of little quotes or phrases um, that are quite nice so I've added some of those in in a couple of places hilariously every time I turn to this page my camera's focusing on this guy's face <laughs> And that's four weeks, so that's up to the 24th of July. Um, chances are I'm probably not going to fill all of this in because, like I say, normally I don't um, work ahead like this. I don't draw them out. I mean, obviously, if that's something that you prefer to do, then you can do that. There's nothing to stop you from doing that. And in fact, a friend of mine um, used to do that um, when she was still bullet journaling. Um, she used to take a day at the beginning of, of every month and draw everything out. Um, and I know a few bullet journalers on YouTube that do the same thing. But you certainly don't have to do that. And I prefer to do kind of day by day rather than plan it out like this. But you've got a few different options. Obviously, you've got a couple of vertical spreads. Um, whatever works for you, however you want to use the space. And you've got a couple of horizontal spreads. Um, you know, that one was six days. This is four days. You can literally, the, the beauty of a bullet journal is that you can do anything that you want. Um, and I hope that this has demonstrated that you don't have to be able to draw, you don't have to be artistic. If you can draw a straight line, either freehand or with a ruler, and if you can, um, you know, write numbers and letters, then you can bullet journal and if you can stick things in. And it can still be pretty and it can still be aesthetic. It doesn't have to be, you know, like a minimalist bullet journal with nothing in it. Um, you know, at the end of the day, it's whatever style suits you. It is the, the reason why I love bullet journaling is that I make this mine. I make it very much about what I want and what I want to see and how I want to use it. And I love the fact that it's flexible. Um, so I hope that this has been helpful. <clears throat> if you do have any questions, then please ask them down below and leave a comment for me and I will do my best to answer any questions that you do have. Um, and obviously if there's any other kind of similar things that you'd like to see bullet journaling wise you know perhaps things that i haven't covered here or things that might answer some of your questions or whatever then um by all means again let me know in the comments if you've enjoyed this video if you found it useful then please give me a thumbs up and um subscribe down below as well um, I really appreciate you taking the time to um, watch my videos and um, obviously to subscribe and what have you. Um, so yeah, thanks very much and I'll see you next time. Bye.